Hello there YouTube, my name is Adam Schiffman and welcome to another episode of 6th edition in mind with the old codex. Um, this episode we're talking about the, the big mech which is essentially the orc tech marine or warp smith or mech smith or whatever it's called um, it's a pretty decent repair hero to be honest um, but we'll go over the stat line but we made an upgrades first uh, the big mech comes at an astonishing 35 points so <laughs> You know, if you really want to go for a cheap HQ, this is what you go for. He's 35 points. He pretty much has the exact same stat, uh, stat line as an orc knob. He comes with weapon skill 4. Risk skill 2, because he's a knob, uh, because he's an orc. Strength 4, strength 5 on the charge. Toughness 4, 2 wounds. Initiative 3, 3 attacks. Leadership 8, 6 plus armor save. Not bad. Um. This is actually where the, the slugger or shooter comes in. And you, you could take the shooter and sit him next to vehicles. You know, he's cheap. You can either take the, the slugger or the shooter, as I just said. You know, it depends what you want to use him for. You can you just sit him with a shooter and, you know, he's your cheap HQ. You can, and he comes with a chopper, which is obviously a close combat weapon. And he comes with mech tools, which has actually changed in an errata, obviously with hold points and stuff like that. Yeah, have the errata right in front of me. Uh, this, they, they changed. They changed it. Uh, in each of your shooting phases, instead of firing his weapons, a mech boy may choose to repair a single friendly vehicle. So this could be your own or uh, a battle brother uh, for an ally um, that he is in base contact with or embarked upon. So if he's inside us as well, you can do this. Um, on a roll of on a roll on a d6. In the role of a four or more, you restore a hull point lost in battle, or a weapon destroyed, or a, an immobilized result. Uh, this effect is immediate. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. You could for thirty-five points. You know, you could pair this to the price of other um, repair heroes. Or oh, actually, attack marines are elites, aren't they? So this is yeah, they they kind of get a better trade-off, but. This is a this is a cheap HQ unit you know, because obviously you've got to take one HQ, so you could you could just take this, and he sits inside your battle wagon fixing it. Not bad, not bad at all. Uh, for special rules, he comes with exactly the same as the war boss. He's independent character, so subjugated by every single rule tied with the independent character. He has furious charge. Uh, he has mob rule, which is obviously described within the the war boss section, and uh, the war special rule. Doesn't come with uh, stick bombs, but that's not needed really. He isn't. He is more the ranged. He's like the your your go-to ranged hero. Obviously, he the unit composition is one big mech, and he is infantry. Uh, the, the, a nice little addition for the big mech is he has a special ability called the big mech, uh, which essentially allows you to bring one death dread as a troop choice. So you, if you take two of these. You take. You could take two death dreads, and as your troop choices, you don't need to bring any orc boys if you wanted to go for a pure mech army. You know, not bad, not bad at all. Let's go to his options. For twenty points, the big mech can take a burner, which is essentially a flamer. But if you don't shoot the flamer, uh, it is a power weapon. Personally, twenty points is a little too much. Because if you compare to other heroes that can take like a power sword or power weapon, they are not twenty point upgrades. Yeah, okay, you've got the you've got the flexibility of having a flamer and or a fl uh, power weapon. But for an additional tw uh, five points, you can take a power claw. Yeah, he's only, he's, only, he's strength nine due to viewers charge. So person, I personally wouldn't take a melee weapon because he has uh, some better upgrades. Uh, those are the box under the chain. Where you you replace your chopper with the burner or the power claw. You can replace your slugger with uh, a combi rocket or a combi scorcher, which yet again are five points each. Combi scorcher is the better option. However, the big bet can take. I, I would say a semi-unique weapon, which is the custom mega blaster, an orc. 
plasma gun for 15 points. I wouldn't say it's the worst option, weapon option for him, but I wouldn't recommend it simply because it's one shot. Well, not one shot only, but it's assault one, and it gets hot, and you have disc two. Mm. No, I'm alright. If they had like, I don't know, the big mech was like weapon school three, but then blisk school three, you know, maybe, maybe, it's like he's this is the big mech. He spends the time in a, in a in a workshop. You know, for God's sake, he's not he's not a combat guy. I know he's still a lork, but he's a mech. Um, you also have other options to replace your slugger with for forty points. You can take mega armor. Mm, no. Nah. I don't, I don't see why you would take that. You could make him tough, but it's forty points. You know, he's still pretty. He's still pretty cheap, but I would recommend it. However, for sixty points, this is the most expensive of grades. So you could take the shock attack gun, which by far is the best weapon upgrade, and is mainly the only reason you would take the big mech. The the, the shock attack gun is so unique. There is, I can't, I can't think of an army that has something like this. It's absolutely amazing, and I love it. And I, I always take it. Uh, the shocker deck has a range of sixty inches. You know, so if you want a standard, you know, small, the, the standard board size, he sits in the corner. He can shoot at everybody. Um, it's strength two d six, which has its own little chart, which I'll get into. It is AP two, which is invaluable in 6th edition and it is an ordnance 1 large blast even better large blast now ignore cover saves well, all blasts now do so that AP2 is even better you know it's it's negating everybody's armor save it's like if you if you're against Eldar you know they've got their the rangers that with that, that 2 plus cover save it's just bang gone you don't have your cover save you don't have your armor save Dark Reapers of the as well. Bang, gone. No armor save. No cover save. So so good. Uh, however, um, let's see. The I actually think this is the only infantry model that has an ordnance weapon, unless the the conversion beam for the Tech Marine or the Master of the Forge is is ordnance. I don't believe so. I think that's a heavy weapon. However, it does say in the little asterisk at the bottom, the shock attack gun is treated as heavy for the purpose of movement as assault, simply because all its weapons are normally on a vehicle. A Lehman Russ or a looted wagon with a boom gun, they're two prime examples. However, the, the, the shock attack gun does come with its own chart if you roll a double or you roll an 11 on the 2d6. Uh, I would say four of the results are probably bad. But funny in their own regard, and the rest of them probably benefit you. If you roll a double one, essentially uh, a d6 bubble around the mech, and wherever you roll on that d6 is removed from play, including the mech. So, um, yeah, it's that it, that's pretty bad. But the chances to get double one <laughs> are pretty slim. But you can get it. But if you take two two big mechs with shark attack guns, because they're not unique, you can do that. You know, nothing wrong. If you roll double two, uh, the opponent may choose the target of the shock attack gun this turn. This may be the unit the same side as the mech. This weapon does not have a minimum range, so you could attack a unit right in front of the mech and hopefully and try and hit the mech. Or, what's saying you can't place it on the mech just straight away? I don't know. I don't. This the the, the, the he also has another result which is pretty much the same but it's in your control um, if you roll a double three resolve the shot upon the nearest unit to the intended target be it friend or foe see that one's not too bad at all simply because that, that 60 inch range you know you fire all the way across the other side of the map uh, map table so the net so it's literally the person closest to that other unit so that's mainly going to be the enemy Especially if you go for a mech army, you're not going to have like slugger boys up there. So that's probably a better one L earlier game, because later game you might be in there uh, deployment. Um, if you're on a double four, and this isn't too bad, but not as good as it's going to be. Uh, 
the attack is still resolved, but it uses the small template, which is the three inch blast template, but it, it still resolves its friend six, but at AP six. So if you get to Horde, it's still probably not too bad. But against Space Marines or anything equivalent to Space Marines, it's not gonna do anything really. Strength six, so you will be wounding, but if it's just standard bug infantry, then you probably will, but AP six. But it's better than nothing. Ah, this is my favourite one. This is if you roll double five. Uh, no shot is fired. However, the mech is pl uh, the, the mech is essentially fired at the unit. Uh, immediately place the mech in base contact with the target and treat him as if he's initiated as an assault that turn. So, so does this mean that he himself, just him individually, has initiated an assault? And then do you resolve this straight away, or, or do you, or does this like automatically put you into the assault phase? Personally, a little confused on that. I have a feeling that you, in a fr in a friendly game, I I would say you'd fire the mech. He's assaulted, but and then you carry on with your with your, with your shooting, and then you go to your assault. So probably start with that one first, so you don't forget it. Um, if you roll a five and a six, which is the eleven, which is roll an eleven, it's not too bad, but. It's essentially uh, only the model under the template hole. So that's like if you're using uh, the older ones. So if you've got that little teeny wee little hole in the blast template, uh, anything hit by that is resolved at strength ten. So against vehicles, this is very very good, and it will most likely be killing whatever's under there. However, the the gun may not fire next turn. Bit of a downside, but double six is amazing. If you roll a double six, any model hit by this by the gun this turn is removed from play. And then shit, it's a full text grenade. And then vehicles take an automatic penetration hit. This is where it gets cheesy. Obviously you're gonna have someone up there who's not gonna like this. But it does clearly state any model hit by the gun. A vehicle is a model. Yeah, no, it also says the vehicle is taking an automatic penetrating hit. But it clearly states in the rule book that a tank or a vehicle of some sort is a model. So uh competitively you probably just say, nope, the vehicle's not removed, it takes an automatic hit, but in your friendly games, <laughs> why not take advantage of this? Everything on your everything in your opponent's army is a model of some sort. So you could attack a land raider, and it technically should be removed, but it should take your penetrating hit first. Hmm. So I don't understand. But that's pretty much the shark attack gun. I absolutely love this weapon. For 60 points, it is brilliant. Because for 115 points, you can have your big mech with the two armor upgrades. So you got your four plus invulnerable, four plus arm save, five plus invulnerable, and the shark attack gun. So it's, it's moderately tough. And he's kicking out a lot. And the, the 5 plus invulnerable is there just to safeguard from a last cannon. Just one last cannon going bang! Gone. Dead. Because he, um, they're not immune to instant death. The only one, the only character that is immune to instant death is Gazgul Thraker. Obviously, let's carry on. You can also take. For, if you go for a more. Actually, you can take his both rolls. You can take a custom force field for 50 points, which can be used offensively and defensively. Because defensively, you can. Um, it's it's quite good to put in squads like tank busters uh, and looters. You know, when they've only got this six plus armor save with no possible armor upgrade, it could be used for them. But 50 points is a little expensive, and people probably will try and get. And if people get position shots, obviously they're going to go for the big mech. But it does give a five plus. Um, uh, it gives 5 plus cover save. I think in 5th edition it used to be a 5 plus invulnerable save. I'm not too sure, I'm not sure how it was. I think it was the 5 plus. It pretty much gives anything within a 6 inch bubble. Anything, including vehicles. It gets a 5 plus cover save. However, vehicles also being encounters obscured and have a 5 plus cover save. If that means anything. <laughs> there, for 40 points, the. The big man can replace a slugger for a war bike as well. Mm, maybe. You could do. 
he makes him toughness 5, makes him 4 plus armor save, 4 plus cover save. You could use him if you're going for a lot of killer cans, a lot of death dreads. You could possibly take a couple of these, so you go, you got your two death dreads as your troops, and then put them on their bikes so they're, they're tough. And, um, and then obviously he's zooming around, fixing vehicles, yada yada. Yeah, that could be good. Um, but the rest of the options, the the big mech can take an ammo runt for three points. This is probably quite good in conjunction with the the big mech with shock attack gun. Simply because you could re I take it that would be a, a it says reroll of shooting, so a reroll on your scatter. Maybe that's only one, but maybe maybe you could take it. Obviously, you could take for ten points. You could take the cyborg body, which is a five plus and vulnerable save. <coughs> And for five points, you could take heavy armor, which is your four plus armor, which is the two things you should always take, no matter what. Um, if you're going to, if you're thinking about putting your big mech with some looters or something, or going in a squad that doesn't have the option of taking a boss pole, for five points, you could take a boss pole. I prob, I I put a big mech with a shock attack gun in with looters. So I'd always take the boss pole. It's only five points. So even if you didn't end up putting him in the squad, it's only five points. For fifteen points, you can actually give him an attack squig, which is uh, plus one attack to his stat line. <laughs> so essentially, if you were worried about firing your mech at someone, you could take um, you could take the the attack squig. And a power claw simply because it gives him. It, it, it says he's initiated an assault, so he has charged. I take it. So even if even if he hasn't, he's still got four attacks with a power claw. So it's it's not the end of the world if you have just fired your mech across the table. And you normally will be using your mech against other ranged units. And normally, heavy ranged units aren't that brilliant in combat, so they shouldn't kill him. <laughs> Should it be an imperative word? Um, and also another thing is that uh, the big mech can take grot oilers for five points. Can take three of these grot oilers is essentially a it gives you if you take three, you get three re rolls on your mech tools. However, I think not too sure. I think you can only use one. Turn. If you could use all three, that's ridiculous. That's very, very good. Especially in an apocalypse game. Imagine if you're sitting behind a stomper with a mech. And if you took three grot oilers. Oh no, I've just lost. Uh, I've just lost one of my guns. Oh, I'll repair it. Without a doubt. Even the stomper himself can also try and attempt to repair. But obviously, I'm not going to go about that in this video. That probably means that we're near the end. Yeah, that that that's about it for the big mech. The big mech has a lot more options, a lot more versatility than the war boss. This one is brain over brawls. You have to be a little careful what you want to use him for. He's definitely got some versatility. You can use him. You can use him as a SMI tough, quick um, repair unit. You can use him as a hard hitting AP2 shock attack gun unit. Or you could you could also use him as just your cheap HQ and just give him. Yeah, you actually could. You could give him no options. You could just there's your HQ. Let him die, or maybe I don't know. Or sit him in your deployment zone, just fixing all your stuff. And obviously, with your warlord traits, you take the defensive ones. I personally uh, don't really like the standard warlord traits. I actually always forget about them. But <laughs> uh, but that's about it for the big mech. The next in line is the weird boy. Not a massive fan, but I think he he has his he has his role. Anyways, thank you for watching and stay tuned.